Well, good morning, YouTubers and Facebookers. Uh, today is Thursday, March 25th, 2010. And this is not a blog video. How about that? Uh, well, really not a blog video. Not intended to be, anyway. I figured, uh, you know, I've done a whole lot of reviews and, and uh, uh, videos showing you guys... Uh, how to replace different parts in your PC but I've never really done videos that break down the actual components uh, you know break everything down to a component level for the beginner to understand and so I'm going to try and do that today and this video may end up spanning three four or five uh, YouTube videos due to their uh, 10 minute time limit it just depends on how much I talk and how many rants I go off on uh, I am on a double dose of Robitussin. Uh, I woke up this morning after tossing and turning and coughing and gasping for air all night. So it looks like I've caught the second bug that's going around. That makes three different bugs for me in the last two months. One uh, sinus uh, cold or whatever. Two uh, a few days ago that 24 hour stomach bug that just about cleaned you completely out and now three this chest cold congestion whatever anyway so you'll have to excuse me if I'm a bit loopy or if I'm a bit loopier than usual anyway so let's go over the basic components real quick of a computer uh, of, of your typical PC we'll say that uh, this doesn't necessarily apply for Mac but it kinda does uh, m uh, many of the components of today's uh, Macintosh or Macs uh, are pretty much the same as a PC nowadays so here we go this is the case it's the big box this is not called as some of my my grandmother used to call it my aunt some some of my aunts still call them this is not the CPU this is the case or if you'd like this is the computer uh, it is not the CPU it's a case that holds everything including the CPU and a whole lot more now as you see here I'm taking the side panel off of this case uh, so I can show you the inside this actually happens to be an old computer I've had sitting around for the last month this is my mother's old piece of junk computer she was using for three or four years cobbled together from garage sale pieces and pieces that I had laying around uh, definitely no means by no means a powerhouse system let me tell you but it will serve its purpose for this uh, this little video so okay we're looking inside the case well first of all let me tell you your CPU is right underneath here this is a heat sink and a fan the heat sink is sitting on top of the CPU because the CPU gets really really hot and without this heat sink and fan cooling it off it would fry itself in a matter of seconds um, see if I can get that off of there let me show you guys oh I need a screwdriver for it actually I don't I just remembered I have a C extra CPUs laying around in my drawer so uh, here is an example of what a CPU is it's not this big case it's not the whole computer this is the CPU think of this as the brains of your computer now this one if you look and if my camera will focus in actually happens to be a two point either a 2.4 or a 2.8 gigahertz Celeron I can't see through the lens but uh, this is an Intel Celeron socket 462 uh, when they say socket 462 or socket uh, uh, it's not 462 dang it what is it anyway w whenever they put a number aside from the socket that generally means however many pins there are in the socket so you'll often see things like socket 462 socket uh, uh, LGA 1156 or socket 775 and that generally re refers to how many pins 
or on newer processors the pins are actually in the socket instead of on the CPU and it refers to how many little dots there are on the back how many contact pads so this is your CPU this is the think of this as the brain of your computer without this your computer would not know what to do because it has no brain uh, this is the actual thinking power of your computer so then we have the motherboard the motherboard or uh, some people call it a uh, main board uh, most people call it a motherboard though in, in the computer industry <coughs> it's kind of um, I don't know the best way to describe it is maybe uh, would be either your skull or your spine it's kind of what everything in fact spine is actually a good analogy it's what everything else is attached to uh, and it's what tells everything else what to do and 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 it's like it bridges everything between the CPU and all your little components here you know um, <clears throat> it's just, it basically is like your spine uh, it provides an interface for the memory for video card for any other kind of peripheral you have attached you're, if you plug in your camera you're plugging it into a port that's located on the motherboard or attached to the motherboard okay so uh, on your motherboard you can see here we have memory these three sticks of memory here and I'll pop one of these out and just show you what it looks like for those of you who are curious this actually happens to be DDR memory, DDR1. There are several types of memory that have spanned back over 20 years, ranging from 30-pin uh, SIMs that were used back in the 80s and 90s to the newest um, <clears throat> DDR3 memory. Uh, DDR3 is pretty much brand new. Well, I guess it's about a year and a half old. Uh, I haven't even upgraded to DDR3. My computer there uses DDR2. Uh, generally, uh, uh, DDR memory is uh, faster. DDR stands for double data, right? Because in the beginning, we had 30-pin uh, chips, 72-pin uh, chips, and 168-pin chips or sticks as we like to call them sticks of memory because it's kind of stick shaped uh, that were single data rate and they could only be read on one side of a clock cycle and think of a clock cycle as a big sine wave that goes up and down well uh, in the beginning the memory could only be read or written to on one side of that clock so it was like little hops well with double data rate memory it can be read on both sides of that wave so you get effectively double the data rate uh, DDR2 and DDR3 have increased that uh, memory read and write rate uh, exponentially I mean you know if you've ever heard of Moore's law well everything just increases you know computer wise eventually they say it's going to come to a halt but I can't see it you know ever stopping so there's your memory and your memory think of your memory uh, sort of like uh, the memory centers of your brain so it's, it's like short-term memory because once you turn the power off to your machine um, anything that's stored on these memory chips is gone uh, but without these memory chips without these sticks of memory your computer wouldn't have any short-term memory and it wouldn't know what to do wouldn't know what to do with itself wouldn't know how to operate so you know it needs this short-term memory while we're talking about short-term memory let's uh, look at, at a, well I actually don't have one here but normally I would have a hard drive here in fact